Okay, another uh, marvelous miniature from the book Edgar Colley, Caissa's Wounded Warrior by Taylor Kingston. Uh, this game was played between Colley and Thomas in Budapest in 1929. The opening is called Veresov opening. Uh, by the way, uh, in the book, uh, um, Obviously, there is, uh, and this is why one should buy the books uh, instead of watching videos. <laughs> but in the book, there is a simple uh, description, an easy description of Mr. Uh, Sir George Alan Thomas, the black player, that was born in 1881 and died in 1972. His historical elo, written obviously by the author of the book, is 2470. His title, I Am, uh, which he uh, seems he got in 1950. He was England's second best chess player after FD Yates around this time, this time in 1929. Uh, the, uh, winning the British Championship in 1923 and 1934. Moreover, he was world class in tennis and badminton, reaching the Wimbledon semi finals in 1907 and 1912 and winning 21 titles in the All England Open Badminton Championship from 1906 to 1928. However, however, his chess was not quite at the same level uh, and the Collie scored a plus nine minus two equal eight against him. Uh, the quickest victory being this game that we are going to watch now, okay? So d4, knight f6, knight c3. What uh, is called the rest of opening, d5, bishop g5. Uh, so Colle was not afraid to experiment with an orthodox opening. In this case, he had a company, as by 1929, the Veresov had been tried by Gunsberg, Marshall, Capablanca, Breyer, Reti, Spielman, Alekin, and especially Tartakover who praise it in the hypermodern Schach Party in 1925. Okay, maybe my German accent is not so good, but hey, for what you pay is what you get, right? <laughs> okay, this seems to be the first time Colley tried it. Okay, uh, notice, he mentioned Breyer. There is another beautiful book on Breyer uh, by New in Chess that is quite thick, probably more than 500 pages. Uh, Breyer is... Uh, player that deserve time and maybe I will try to make some videos about the games in that book because I believe it's uh, quite uh, interesting to learn chess history also through the games. Okay, with that said, let's move on. Here we see that black plays h6 because he's asking the question to black, what do you want to do? Try to white, sorry, what do you want to do? Um, and uh, it's interesting also for another reason. Here, uh, black uh, had other choices like knight bd7 or uh, g6 or uh, bishop f5. All choices that one should explore as black if he wants to have a repertoire against the Vereso. Okay. Okay. So now let's see. h6, white takes takes again e3 now that the bishop does not uh, need to be developed obviously one wants to play e3 c6 supporting the center bishop d3 f5 now if you see this move f5 it tells me something right it tells me that uh, black doesn't want white to control e4. So he's trying to fight for e4, he's trying to avoid that the white will push on e4. This is clear, right? But uh, it's also a problem because the best move to contrast would be knight at d7, knight f6 and knight e4. Unfortunately, he cannot really play it because this bishop is protecting this pawn. So I don't know how we black will solve this problem because obviously I didn't see this game in advance. Otherwise I would know it. 
but I think uh, this is the best way because imagine if Black can do that, it's really a strong, uh, a kind of strong outpost. Also, if of course uh, um, White could play this uh, knight g2 and keep f3 to avoid that black is able to take total control of before. Well, some consideration in the opening are always important, okay? So, uh, let's see how the game continue. And in fact, we continue with uh, knight g2, which means uh, that uh, white is telling black, your thing of trying to go on e4 is not working because I will play this move if you do that. And so, uh, black needs to continue with something else. Uh, how would you continue here? That's important. That's important. Because, like I just said, like I just said, you, you want to do that maneuver that I just show, right? Then you need to do something to protect this. But at the same time, you want to develop the pieces, right? For example, you want to develop this bishop. But where do you develop? So it comes to my mind, and it came to my mind before when I was talking about this maneuver, but maybe, maybe black should defend this with this, play bishop g7, and then go with the maneuver knight d7 f6. Maybe. This is a, a way. Obviously, I'm not strong like uh, Sir Thomas as a chess player, so maybe he was right to play something different. Who knows? From what I see in the book, he played bishop d6. I don't think bishop d6 is the right move. I don't think it's the right move. Let's see. Queen d2, g6. Here we, again, <laughs> I'm sorry. You just played bishop g6, and now you play g6. Uh, sorry, bishop d6, you play g6, it doesn't make sense. Then it would have made more sense to develop the bishop on g7. Yeah. F3, and here, like I said, you, you see that uh, all this maneuver comes to life uh, because uh, you must put yourself in the other uh, player's shoes, in a sense, to try to understand what they want to do when they play one move, why they want to do it, and here it's, uh, it was quite clear, it's not that I need an engine to tell me what they want to play. That's the good thing of why we play chess, because we want to use our heads. Also, if, as human beings, we make a lot of mistakes. So I'm not saying that I'm infallible or the best. But as we can see, a free it's played because white doesn't want black to take control of e4. At the same time, I don't think black plays the bishop f8 in the right square, but we can say it clearly. And watch now, he plays bishop e7. It's crazy, totally crazy. It's a waste of time for no reason. Castle, castle. Again, uh, he castle on this side and he left all these holes. Come on, it doesn't make sense. This is why this bishop was better here, in this square, because it was not uh, leaving all these holes around, no? E4. So, the battle for E4 was won by white, okay? Uh, and notice here again, um, luckily, this time the author, Kingston, put the diagram in the right place, uh, because uh, it's uh, back to move, Black needs to decide what to play. Uh, I strongly advise you put this position over the board and uh, try to think uh, as black what would you play, why? Because here it's a very complex position. There are a lot of possible takes. D takes e4, F takes e4. Uh, obviously there are uh, other moves like bishop g5. Uh, so you are in black shoes and you need to find the right continuation. What is the right continuation here? So stop the video and put yourself in black shoes and decide what you want to play. It's very important because uh, if you go to play tournaments, position like this uh, will uh, take 10 minutes of thinking. If instead you do your thinking now, when you will be over the board in a tournament, 
you will be already able to know what you should do because you have understood the position deeply based on the pawn structure and based on the fact that uh, you tried to calculate. Okay. Here, Black made the mistake. He played knight a6, but Kingston uh, places a mistake. Uh, now, f takes e4, f takes e4, bishop g5, queen e1, and now knight a6. This gives equality to Black. Uh, I don't have any reason to uh, contradict Mr. Kingston because I'm sure that he checked everything with the computer. And also, if maybe it wasn't Stockfish 14, 15, or 20, who knows what a Stockfish there will be when you will watch this video, uh, maybe it was just Stockfish 11. Uh, Stockfish 11 is still stronger than any other human being. Okay? But, uh, Mr. Kingston, in his uh, excellent book on Poland, uh, also gives us another line. Bishop g5, queen e1, bishop e3, king h1, rook e8, queen g3, and queen g5. Also, this line gives equality. Instead, um, the thing is that uh, when uh, black played knight a6, uh, Mr. Kingston writes, uh, this loses at least a pawn, okay? So this is kind of important. Uh, as I said, um, it was a, a very critical moment and we must study critical moments in the games if we want to understand them. Otherwise, we are just wasting time. How does white continue here? It takes a five, boom. And uh, you could say, why? Uh, loses a pawn, well, this is clear, no? Right? Uh, there is a problem here. This pawn is not protected. And uh, also now this structure is becoming kind of weak because how is going to continue, right? Just to make an example, if he continues with g takes e5, white can continue with thumb, bam, boom gain the pawn and I'm sorry, this is really horrible for black. I'm not sure uh, because obviously uh, white will be able to create an attack. What if instead of uh, taking on f5, uh, black plays king g7? Well, once more, he can play tax, tax. This is already bad, right? double pawn on a pile that generally gives a draw if we would enter a pawn and gain, okay? So, tuck and tuck. In this case, also in this case, uh, Kingston says white is better. And uh, I have no doubt that it is. Maybe not uh, only the question of material, but the question of the position. Look how ugly is this position. This double pawn, this backward pawn, and also these uh, hanging pawns, in a sense, because they must be defended. So the position is uh, clearly worse for black. But what did black play? Black played g5. Hmm. And how did uh, white continue? Again, uh, we must enter in our opponent mind when we play chess. He played knight a6. What is the reason of playing knight a6? Well, maybe it could be that he wants to play c6, c5, and that was to support such push. But maybe it could be also that he wants to exchange kind of a passive knight for a very active bishop that is attacking on this side, right? So in this case, what do we play? We try to prophylaxis. What does prophylaxis mean? If uh, black wants to go on b4, we need to prophylax this and prevent it. And that's what white did. Only three. Bishop f6, 
and what do you do as white? Well, now you have uh, still two pieces that are not doing much, and these two pieces are quite ki kind of strong, right? Uh, while also this piece is completely out of game, and this has not been developed either, right? So what you need to do is to develop your pieces to bring into the game the rooks that are very powerful. And obviously we want to attack this side, the king side, because the goal of the game is to give checkmate. And so we need to find a way to let the rooks enter into the game. What do we do? Uh, white played f4. Uh, and so this is a possibility. A another possibility, if one is uh, more, let's say, uh, greedy, material oriented, could have been exchange this uh, bishop. So we create the isolated pawns that can be a target or however a big disadvantage in the endgame. And then we protect our pawn f5 that is clearly a kind of outpost because it limits the mobility and development of the pieces on the black side. Notice also that we have maneuvers like knight g3 and knight h5 to continue our attack on the king side. That's another possibility, right? Um, and let's see. Uh, in fact, yes, <laughs> I didn't even read the note but this is funny because the author uh, agrees with me. He says, a more materialistic player would consolidate with take on a 6, bishop takes a 6, and g4. But call is more interesting in opening lines of attack. It's what you have to do. I mean, if you don't let the rooks enter, you are not going to finish this game. Uh, and that's quite important. So, one player is betting that he will win on the king side. The other player is doing the opposite. Is betting that is winning on the queen side. Whoever arrives fourth is the one who wins the game. Okay? Now, the problem is obviously that the bishop is boxed in. He cannot go back. He cannot go here. He cannot go here. And next move, black could play this. So what do you do? What do you do? As you can see, chess is a game where we must solve problem after problem after problem. And at the same time, we must create problems for our opponents. Okay? And here, um, White solved the problem exchanging the bishop because he didn't have any other good square where to put it. Uh, at the same time, notice this, notice this. Uh, Mr. Um, Sir Thomas, he really played a good move. Boom, takes on d4. He didn't care to take on a6. He doesn't do what his opponent wants. He does something else. This is clearly a title player playing because that's a good move. Knight takes d4, and now he takes because, okay, there is not uh, much else to do. But he solved that thing fourth. Again, however, notice how ugly this situation is. If we exchange Let's say that uh, white loses the game materially and he finds himself uh, with a king against the other king. He will draw just by the fact that if he's able to reach the A file, those two pawns are useless. So uh, black has no advantage, is kind of down of two pawns. Then there is another problem. This has become kind of weak, very weak. Okay, plus we have now what is called the isolated queen pawn. Isolated queen pawn. Uh, so, in this case, we need to know how to handle such pawn structure. Uh, the handle is that one side, white, wants to block that pawn from moving because if he's able to reach the endgame, that is a weak pawn that must be defended. Uh, and so it will be uh, easier situation for white, white will have an advantage, 
and uh, um, he also doesn't want uh, to exchange uh, white want to exchange the pieces black uh, on the other end must try to find a way out of this situation uh, which means not to exchange the pieces because you don't want you don't want to go into an end game with this kind of of pawns rush or because I believe it's kind of lost. The game is lost with this kind of construction. Let's move on. Let's see what uh, how the game goes on. Huh? F take g5, bishop take g5, queen f2, and here rightly uh, Mr. Uh, Kingston uh, puts a diagram this time. So th this is really good because uh, it's uh, black to move. What should uh, black do? What should black do? Look at that. This situation is a thing that happens in your games. So you need how to fight uh, against white that is blocking your isolated queen pawn, IQP. Uh, what's the right move for black? Take your time and uh, try to find the right move. Thomas, in this moment, he made a blunder, and the blunder is rook b8. Big blunder. Uh, what should have played? Well, it seems that the correct move could have been rook e8 or bishop f6. Um, now, again, we are not saying that uh, black is better thanks to this move, uh, uh, but it's definitely better than rook b8. Uh, the situation for black is still bad, okay? The situation is still bad. But w watch, you, you can see it, you can see it. This is isolated. This is isolated, this is isolated, this double and isolated. I don't know, worse than that, uh, it's like seeing the mouth of an eight-year-old with the teeth that are all isolated. Okay, let's move on. Uh, how did um, white continue after rook b8? After rook b8, white played the typical move. The moves must be double attacks, double attacks. Uh, chess is the art of double attacks, okay? Uh, why? Because there is a move, try to find it here, that gives a huge problem to black. What move do you think it is? Boom, queen g3, great move, great move. Why? Because this bishop is pin, right? There is behind the king. So as soon as white plays h4, the bishop is gone. Bye bye, bishop. At the same time, white is attacking b8. <laughs> and this is a big problem, right? So, how does black solve this problem? Black in the game played queen b6, which also attacks the knight d4, and which also pinned the knight because behind there is the king. White played rook ad1, good move. Uh, black obviously unpinned this bishop because otherwise it was lost, but there is another problem. Uh, yes, black was able to defend this, but there wasn't, uh, he left this one behind. And why that's important? Because that pawn, that central pawn, bring one of our other pieces into the game. And uh, this is obviously knight takes d5. Now, knight takes d5, yes, attack this, which is protecting this, so it starts to become overload, but not only. Uh, notice how good is this knight in taking away squares from the uh, bishop, and also in supporting a possible advance. Uh, now, as we can see, the game is going toward the end, eh? because things are becoming terrible. So, queen b7. Uh, now, uh, obviously, um, every uh, pawn grabber, the pawn grabber level, we say, ah, ha, ha, what happens if uh, I take some b2? Uh, nothing fun. h4, bishop d8, because obviously he must go away. Okay. And the knight d6. What is knight d6 doing? Well, uh, sorry, not knight d6, uh, queen d6. Uh, the queen d6 is attacking this, so it's a big problem. 
Okay. It's a big problem because the game is practically nearly over. Let's say that uh, uh, Black tries to defend. How do you end it? Also, because it's not only that, it's also the rook here, right? Rook here, pawn here. It's a mess. It's a mess. So, how does I continue? Well, uh, this uh, is an even bigger problem, right? Because if you take, I will take two out oh, with this rook, for example, and then obviously this can jump out, it's, and the game is over. If uh, he doesn't take and he goes here, uh, the game is even uh, over faster because at that point there is tuck, tuck, and tuck. So at this point, things are going really, really badly for uh, black. Black plays uh, queen b7, h4 to move the bishop, bishop d8, queen d6 again. Uh, at a certain point, the move is thematic. Once he plays here, the game is over because there is an attack here, there is an attack here. You, you cannot stop everything. Again, chess is a game of double attacks. King h7, and here it seems uh, that uh, white played knight c6. Uh, knight c6, uh, but it seems it's more elegant for the offer Kingston than queen takes f8. Uh, in any case, the game is over. It's over. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, if you take... Uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, I mean, it's a massacre here. Uh, notice also this, this, uh, this is going to, uh, I mean, it's, it's gone. It's, the game is over. It's uh, quite an interesting game. It's quite beautiful. I'm quite uh, grateful that uh, thanks to this book, I saw also this game because uh, it's a beautiful game and uh, it's quite interesting. It shows uh, how black, in my opinion, started to go bad, started to go bad from here, honestly, when uh, we were around here, yes, when here he, he practically didn't uh, understand the position well and played bishop d6, bishop d6 for me, that was a, a problem, clearly a problem, and then of course there were other problems, like when in this position he played knight a6, uh, or the Obviously, the big mistake here, uh, rook b8, okay, but uh, and the game is over. Uh, but in any case, uh, we have learned three possible mistakes by black in this game. Uh, we have seen what were the critical moments. We have trained understanding, for example, when we were in uh, this uh, position, uh, how important it was to play here how to continue, uh, so quite interesting as a game. And especially here, I think for black, this is a good training position. You need to put it on a board and decide what will I play if I would be black? That's a really a good exercise.